recording. Is it cold in here? No. no. Trust me, that sun, you'll start sweating. I've got this open on purpose so some air can come through. So your uh, the cord stays on. Yeah, the cord stays on your left. Yeah. Chris, do not hit that. Oh, there we go. It's. All right. Hello. Yeah. yeah. All right. Are your headphones uh, too loud, loud enough? Perfect. I think, right. yeah. You guys hear me all right? Yep. Hear a little buzz. So I told uh, Guillermo and Christine and the rest of the crew outside here that we're going to borrow you for a little bit, Russ. All right. I guess you guys are going fishing tomorrow? Yeah, we're going to go out to Fairfield. Nice. Uh, try to catch us a few big old Texas bass. Dude. Fish in the hey, grass. Chris. That's why. Let me back you up. Should I focus on looking like looking at the nah, camera or looking just, at you just wherever? Nah, it's, right. it's like super, <clears throat> super chill. If you want to give someone a shout out, say hi, mom. Look right in the camera. Yeah, so, mom? no, we're just <laughs> we're, <laughs> we'll tell some stories here, but yeah. you no, know, I was just <clears throat> I was just telling Christine, you know, Fisher and Guillermo outside here. I was like, we're gonna borrow you for a little bit, talk a little smack, and uh, if. If no one knows who's sitting right here, this is literally like the goat of a fishing in general, but no. but mainly the goat of kayak fishing. And um, you know, everyone knows that you know tournament bass fishing, and you know a lot of it happens in a bass boat. Of course, that's what we do. But um, this whole kayak thing is like has taken off, especially over the what the last five years or so maybe even a little more like maybe six seven i guess is when it yeah started feel, taking feel, off i've I been f- in it about five years i feel like we're jumping way too ahead of this like way too quick into the kayak part okay well i'm just giving an introduction no one knows who russ is he's a kayak guy uh russ is why are you the, trying to crack the whip already because russ is the og film guy uh, i think he I could, could be a good place to start it yeah yeah well, Was. I mean, well, but Russ dominates on the kayak scene. I think whether he's going to admit that or not, he does. But the but the the cool thing about Russ, why I was so geeked out when I heard he was in town, was because Russ came from the boat world. Yes, Chris and I grew up fishing together. Since yes, we were teenagers, we've known each other. He's got some dirt on me, so <laughs> <laughs> I'm uh, sure it's gonna come it's out. It's safe. No, uh, no. we keep right, that. Right. We keep that dirt swept under the <laughs> yeah. rug, Russ. He, I, he didn't just come. But hold up, I I wanted to do the intro for once because he didn't just come from the boat world, but you were a guide at Clear Lake too. Clear Lake, Delta, a lot of the Northern California lakes. Yeah, yeah I grew up in the Bay Area. Uh, Chris is down in San Jose. It was maybe 30 miles north, uh, San Mateo, uh, San Bruno, just south of San Francisco. Yeah, more bit. than just bass stuff. You did a little bit yeah, of everything. Yeah, a lot of saltwater. My dad you know, had a saltwater boat, went out in the ocean, the Pacific, did some salmon, and halibut, and rockfish. And I just my grandpa love, was a big fly fisherman, so I did I just that. love how technical you are. Like, you guys are going to get, like, a front row seat of, like, how technical this man is on my left. Russ Snyders and I grew up fishing in the Bay Area, whether it's striper fishing, halibut fishing, or tournament bass fishing. Like, you were my fishing buddy, dude. It was like you and maybe one other dude that I literally grew up around fishing together. with. Yeah. We did trips together, yes. did a few tournaments together. Yes, and- so a lot, of the, a lot of the tools that I pull out of the, the tool toolbox, you know, on tour... Uh, were tools that you know I kind of acquired fishing with you. Same goes fishing, for, for me, man. Yeah, fishing <laughs> in definitely... northern Northern California. I mean, yeah. that's it's. We get asked all the time. I'm sure you get asked all the time on the kayak tour too. It's like you know, like how do you like how like how did you know to adjust here or there or you know you, what you're a tidal guy now too, California Delta. How yeah. many how many times have we been on the California Delta? Blanking. We we blanked a lot. It's one of those love hate places. Yeah, for sure. yeah. But we but bottom line is we learned a ton and yeah. And, and those are the age. You know that age when you're first getting into it that really influences on the fisherman you really become in, in those early years. And you know we were really blessed just to grow up in that Northern California area yeah. where it's such a versatile place where you yeah. have tidal fisheries. You have these deep clear reservoirs like Shasta and Oroville for spotted bass. You have the foothills lakes like Folsom, Berryessa, and you have natural lakes like Clear Lake that have a little bit of everything. Mm-hmm. So, uh, so yeah, we're both really grateful, I'm sure, for, for growing up in an area like that. So uh, 
trait, you know, just before uh, we brought you over here, um, she pulled up some videos. Okay, so no, no, no. So, like, when we first started dating, this was like 10, 11 years ago, we were going to go, we were driving through, you had moved to Tennessee or something mm-hmm. at that point. Yeah, that's right and when I moved out there, I think, right when you, you brought her over, right when you right. a few it, months after you guys met. Yeah, yeah Nashville. just got out there in Nashville. Yeah. And we were going to crash with you <laughs> and your roommates, and on our way, Chris was like, this is Russ. And he pulled up YouTube and this was before YouTube was was anything, but it was also so it was before the YouTube fishing blew up. But your videos were even before this moment. They were like four or five years before. 2008, 2009. I think yeah, we yeah. just looked it up before you sat yeah, down 14 here. years ago. 14 was your years ago. 11 wow. to 14 years ago. But That's anyway, so the, what he did he was like, check this out. And he hands me this video and it's you throwing a lunker punker for stripers. <laughs> Like uh, in the Bay or Delta it was or in the something. Delta, yeah. Yes, yeah. and I was like, "Who is this guy?" <laughs> yeah, to, and, and you to, had like an old school camera. And it oh, was yeah. an old like JVC like handheld camcorder. This is like like pre GoPro days. You guys look it up right now on Russ YouTube. Snyder's Fourteen R-U-S years ago. R-U-S, one S. Yeah, R U S and then Snyder's S-N- with an S. S N Y D E R S. Is I mean, like old school. Tournament bass fishing, old school fishing, Northern California. But all fishing. big baits. It was all big baits, yeah. like Clear Lake, yeah. like that old Black Dog baits, uh, yeah. Swim Bay. Yeah, and I, feel swim. I got it from. Oh, I think bait. Obedi, which is also from oh, the yeah. Delta. He yeah. was like the real OG, like YouTuber. Uh-huh. And I saw him doing it, and I wanted to get. I was doing tournament fishing, but I was kind of transitioning more into wanted to do guiding, just to have a little more stable income and yeah. stuff. And I'm like, well, this guy Obedi's is po- you know posting these videos, and it's like, why don't I just you know bring the camcorder along, post some videos, and I got a lot of guide trips yeah. from, from doing that after guiding five years. You know, those last couple of years I guided out there is probably getting 150 days a year guiding. That's, dude, one of them you were halibut fishing out of your ranger bag. But I, <laughs> I was like, oh my gosh. That, that, was, that was a bad idea. That uh, <laughs> The salt water and bass boats don't mix too well. So. Uh, How long did your trailer last? Nah, the trailers that we got, yeah. Got but dude, up. you like, you stopped <laughs> filming about four years too soon before you would have been like a mega millionaire because you were the OG doing it. I, yeah, I don't know. I think back on that. Why'd, but... you, qu- why'd you stop filming? <sighs> It just it's a good did, question. You, I kind of got out of, you know, I kind of got out of guiding and I guess a lot of it too was maybe just, you know, everybody started doing it and I'm like, ah, everybody's doing it. I'm over it. I don't know. Maybe it was a little bit of that. Yeah, maybe no it was. <laughs> did you stop? I'm not, I'm not a really big tech person either. So yeah, for yeah. me to like, and the videos I was putting out like these days comparative to like what's out there now, yeah. like it's, yeah. it's garbage. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. <laughs> but at the time, yeah, you know, cause it just evolved so much, but uh, just edit, you know, doing all the editing and stuff like that. What wasn't, I love fishing and I, you know, needed to get guide trips, but I think I got to the point where I had enough videos out there where I got enough guide trips. So I was getting, you know, that's all I really cared about was getting the guide trips. And I right. had so many customers that I was like, ah, I don't need to do these videos anymore. And I don't really so like you, sitting so in front you of a quit computer filming and... while you were still out West. Yeah. 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 Interesting. Dude, we right. want more top water stripers and foo fighters, bro. We, we want more of that. <laughs> I you guys need posting. to see that video. I've made since I came out to Nashville, you know, I was like, I was, I, right before I got into the tournament kayak fishing thing, I really, my main goal was to try to get back into guiding some of these uh, creeks and rivers and, you know, skinny water stuff around Nashville. And I'm like, oh, I'll just, you know, make some YouTube videos like I did back in the day and yeah. it'll blow up and I'll get yeah. plenty of guide trips and. Man, I, I made them like 10 times as good as my original ones, and I get like 200 views. <laughs> and, like, I'm like, and I'm like, oh, screw uh, this. You thought there was competition <laughs> that everyone was doing videos back then. Now, yeah. now I mean, before you type in you type in striper fishing, yeah. and I'd be on the front page. The only thing. California fishing, yep. I'd be on the top yep. page. And it, it Unbelievable. Wasn't, it wasn't so, that there were great videos, just there wasn't anybody else out there right. doing it at that point. So why did you leave the West? If the guide stuff was so good out there, why did you? There uh, wasn't. Get, I mean, I was getting plenty of guide trips, but the thing is, is I was living in the Bay Area, having to travel. I mean, the closest place is probably the Delta, and that was an hour and a half drive, and I had to cross, you know, those, just the bridge tolls. Like, if I want to go to Lake Berryessa uh, with a double axle boat, you know, trailer, you get charged twenty dollars per bridge, like the Bay per Bridge, bridge. twenty bucks. Uh, Carquinas Bridge, another twenty. That's forty dollars in that, bridge tolls. That was in two thousand nine, too. Two thousand ten, right? yeah, right yeah. around there. Two thousand nine, two thousand ten. Uh, and it was, you know, and then you had these muscle inspections. You had to pay a fee for that, and gas yep. was five bucks a gallon. You know, just the overall I mean, the same reason a lot of the California, you know, bass fishermen people in general in California are leaving. Right. It's just 
uh, just the expense of living is just too much. So you bounced straight to Nashville? Was that yeah. your first stop? Yeah, I had a couple had a couple good friends I grew up with, childhood friends, and uh, they moved out there in the summer. And I'd been in Nashville at one point uh, early on. And uh, when I was young, actually early 20s, I was good friends with with Justin Lucas and another guy, John, uh, yeah, John Billheimer. Bill and the three, and Billheimer had some connections in, <laughs> in Nashville. And uh, we wow. all kind of talked about it like way back in the day. You know, we're like, hey, we should all move out to Nashville. It's just really centrally located as far as all the tournaments, this and that. And it wasn't until probably seven years later when I, a couple of buddies were like, yeah, hey, we're going to move out there. They're doing the whole singer songwriter thing. And <laughs> uh, they moved out in the summer. And I, I have a power washing business, how I, you know, between the power washing and the guiding is kind of how I make my money. And uh, so, yeah, wait until my busy season was over and moved out there and. Yeah, rest did you history. take your ranger bass boat with you i did yeah and i use it i, I fish tournaments out there the first like year or two like i really needed to just keep my focus on on you know establishing my business and making sure i had enough money to you sure. know pay the bills and get sure. things going uh but i did one one year in the bfls just like the music city division and uh had fun with that and but even you know even after having a good year fishing the bfls you still about break even and right it wasn't until uh, a couple years later like so i actually had my kick boats which is yeah from what chris grew i got up. my start it, yeah sure. yeah so i i love just exploring all these rivers and stuff around there there's just so many rivers around middle tennessee and a lot of them don't get any pressure and you know it's just they're a fun place to uh to go out and explore and catch big small mouth and large mouth and um yeah, and eventually I got on. I, I didn't know anybody out there. I was pretty much fishing by myself. I'd leave my bike, you know, just like locked up on a tree on, on the <laughs> at the base of the, uh, you know, at the takeout. And then I drive my kick boat. I float all the way down, then lock up my my kick boat, and then uh, ride my bike back to my wow. truck. So, but We're eventually talking miles. Yeah, like eight, ten, oh my twelve miles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's too much work, bro. <laughs> it's so a that, that's a lot of that work. Fir first time I met you, you pulled up some GoPro videos. From one of those floats yeah, you did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember. And I remember you explaining, this is how I do it. And yeah. all, if I can hit your ride, I hit your ride. <laughs> so I was like, whoa. whoa. Uh, yeah, a couple times, yeah. And one time I had a pack of wild dogs start coming after oh me as I was gosh. riding my bike. So I just flagged down the first guy. And I'm like, hey, bro, I need a, I need a ride back to my truck. And he's like, all right. And he ended up being a fisherman, <laughs> too. So I, I gave him a couple of uh, buzz baits and jigs that I made for, you know, for compensation for the ride. But but eventually, I, I, you know, I wanted to, to meet some friends and uh, fish and stuff like that. So I just found a Facebook group of uh kayak fishermen out there who um and uh yeah and they had tournaments i'm like oh that's cool they have kayak tournaments and i'll just join a few of these local did, tournaments did you own a kayak or did you do it i didn't no i didn't so i went out and bought a kayak and uh yeah went out and bought a kayak and and just you know went out there really just to meet some friends and stuff and you still owned your boat at this point i still own my boat yeah uh okay. and i was still using it kind of a little bit maybe that first year but after a year of the kayak fishing i, I really just stopped using just sat yeah. in, the, in the driveway for a couple of years and i was having so much fun and i was able, just able to fish so much more too just like the car i didn't have to wash my boat down or do any you know fix yeah. anything on it i just threw it in the back of the truck and you know right I was able to fish probably three times as much as I, I would have with the bass boat, I'd say. This this is awesome. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, you know, after moving from California to Tennessee, you and I talk about it all the time. I talk about it on the air. I talk about it on live when I'm on live. Yeah. Like, the fish rates are so much different. I mean, so much different. Yeah. Um, you know, we all miss Clear Lake. We all miss pulling up on Shag Rock. It's like the only point on Clear Lake and throwing giant swim baits across there, catching well, eight Anderson. pounders. Right. <laughs> and, uh, but like when you go out east, Tennessee, Alabama, down to Florida, Georgia, whatever, like those spots don't exist. A lot of those areas don't translate. Yeah. A lot of the stuff from out Why west. Why are things. <sighs> I don't know. You know, the biggest difference that I, that really blew my mind moving out to this part of the country is how shallow fish will get. Yep. Like when you're on the Tennessee River, you'll have a, a flat that's like two feet deep that'll go on for hundreds of yards and you'll be up in six inches of water with a kayak and catch a fish. Like in California, there's just no, no way. There's like, no way a fish They could be up there. shallow, but they have to have that deep water yeah. access like really close. Uh, and that's just what I realized just out here just how shallow fish get and that was that was one of the biggest changes and some things you know carry over and translate and some things don't but so it, you've yeah. won several tournaments out west i think you've won a co-angler division just like myself out there um so you've won on you know that level the boater level the, the co-angler level uh and now like you're killing it on the kayak side obviously how many wins do you have on the kayak side 
you probably made more money fishing out of a kayak yeah. than probably half the elite series uh, uh, half the elite series pros did this year. <laughs> maybe, yeah. Like kayak fishing's <laughs> that big now. It it's, really, it's blown up. There's yeah. you know, there's the entries are getting bigger, the prizes are getting better. Uh just during you know, the last tournament, I guess a couple tournaments ago, I just won fifty five thousand dollars. That's amazing. The, that was just a couple weeks ago. Yeah, or like last week. Yep, out on Kentucky Lake. Wow. So it's I mean, yeah, and when you know, it's not just the amount that you're winning, but it's the overhead so low that you don't have to win much to, to break even. See, either, I didn't think know? about that. I, you guys do put forth a lot of like physical effort as far as like tying everything down, loading up in the back of the truck, making sure all your gears together, but you only have a truck. Yeah. Like I've got a truck, a boat, a, a this and a that and the, and, yeah. and the other. And Insurance, it's like, yeah, yeah, you, all, all that, that breaks on all yeah. of that. Yeah. Trolling motors and electronics yeah, and this, and you guys have that the, stuff. Yeah. We but, got, yeah, I mean, both have batteries. There's some things that carry over, but yeah, yeah it's, it's definitely less overhead than the bass. Yeah. yeah. And by the way, I would think like that whole lithium uh, technology is beneficial. It's huge. For I mean, that's really a big part of yeah. why the kayak thing's blown up. It's yeah. just having that lithium technology and how lightweight the batteries can be to power the graphs. The little, a lot of these kayaks now have little motors and stuff so on them too. 12 foot kayaks? Is that what that's they're... about what I have? 12 yeah. foot. But they'll go anywhere. And from... electronics? Yeah. Yeah. Are... Uh, I have two. I mean, I have two different kayaks. One for more of the open water, using the live scope and all that. Yeah. I have a uh, ten inch Humminbird and nine inch Helix. Nice. And then I have another one that's just really trolling simple. motor or no trolling. Yeah, motor? I have yeah. a Torquedo Level nice. Three trolling motor. Um, and you know, it has a range of you know, 25, 30 miles on, wow. on some of those. So we can cover some water. You know, we're only going about five, six, you know, up to seven miles an hour is about on top one 12 speed. volt battery. Uh, yeah, on nice. one twelve volt battery. That's awesome, dude. So, Very cool. Yeah, dude, I got a question about yeah. kayaks. Um, so y'all are starting to get like all, like torpedoes and mm -hmm. multiple graphs and all sorts of things. What are these tournament rigged kayaks running like? What if someone had to go buy one? They weren't sponsored. I guess I really I have a Wilderness Systems Recon that I just uh, that I just tricked out, and nice. uh, you know a lot of the stuff I get at discount or get discount price and stuff like that. But I, I was trying to add it all up with all the graphs, motors, and everything like that. It's, it's definitely up to like fifteen grand. I'd say. Jeez. Wow, and that's dude, that's really? pretty normal. I mean, I I've been around Christine and stuff at the women's events, and yeah. I've walked around, and I'm like, dude, <laughs> they're like some... little mini bass boats. Yeah, for us, you know. Dude, can you finance them? <laughs> I don't know. That's a good question. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure. Yeah. Do you have plans on doing something you need to tell me about? Dude, I got one sitting right outside the store. I'm just, you know, I, I'm just wondering. You know, you guys got a couple old towns, right? Yeah, yeah. we do. I, yeah. We just uh, had them out in Port Aransas. He didn't. He was fishing a tournament, but uh, me and my brother-in-law and my sister, we went and uh, found some like areas that boats couldn't access. And yeah. They, that's yeah. what it's all about. That's yeah. the number one reason why a guy would go out of a bass boat, you know, step out of a bass boat and hop into a kayak. It's just accessibility, right? Accessibility, you say? finance. I mean, yeah. you know, I don't... I, you know, I, this day and age. Yeah. yeah uh, you know, being a younger... Especially being a younger person, I could... Uh, if I was to go back and, like, start over at a young age and this this was available then, like, yeah. I, I think this is the route I, I would have gone. Just, just ma It's just so much more feasible for, for people that are you know, either on a limited budget because of family or is whatever, or if it's somebody that's just fresh out of college, something like that, it's something that, and it's, it's very competitive. I've done both the bass boat tournaments and the kayak tournaments. And yeah. I, I mean, it's, 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 it's pretty much the same thing, same feeling and same, you know, a lot of similarities between the two, it's just the costs are way yeah. down and it's, uh, so clear something up for me here. So there's something I'm like, not, not clear on in the kayak world. Like if you were to ask me, Hey, Zaldane, how many, bass tours are there and i would answer two to two, two tour maybe two and a half two and a quarter yeah <laughs> but there's two and a quarter tours yeah. bass fishing uh, out of a bass boat how many tours are there going there's kayak three. fishing there are three there's three maybe, okay. maybe three and a quarter okay like <laughs> yeah. or something. but okay. uh yeah and, there, there's bass master which okay they have five or six tournaments nice and have six for the schedule next year uh kbf which uh -huh. has been around the uh, the longest and uh and the hobie series hobie series There's okay th three main series okay cool. uh, I, I try to do all of them it's you know sometimes it's, it's hard to <laughs> make and, all three and of them they're work, open but... to anyone or or they yeah. qualify uh no they're all they're open to everyone there'll be a championship or you know at the end of the year where you have to qualify for but uh how and... wait i got i got a question how does that okay so on the aoy side because i try and keep up as much as i can but also you know mm -hmm. i'm not on the aoy side 
when you fish a kayak tour, do you have to fish every event? No, that's what's a little different. Like on the Bassmaster Tour or the, the FLW or MLF, you know, you pretty much got to fish every one right. of them and you'll have like one throw out. Isn't that pretty typical now? Or they used No to, throw outs. Mm-hmm. No throw out. They used to have a throw out, didn't they? Uh, one, one of, of the, the tours. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's, there might be like the Hobie, I think had nine tournaments last year and it was just your best three. Uh, so just your top three uh, finishes and then um, the the classic or the Hobie championship would count you, towards points. You as like well. that format, don't you? Because I, I, I don't, I'd, I'd like more to be honest because really? I end up fishing quite a few yeah. of them and it's like, yeah, I don't know. I, if it was me, I, I'd make it. But you're so the type of guy that throws out a fifth place finish for a third place finish because like, isn't it safe to say you're like the winningest? kayak angler of all time between me and maybe a handful there's maybe five or six no, i don't think so dude <laughs> I, i'm pretty sure because we've got a handful Chris, of like hammer christine kayakers Guillermo, drew gregory who are who are in you the know, cody Ar- milton i'd say it's between us five right? yeah they're, they're all really how good. many have you won uh, and how many years have you been competing do you know uh I've lost count probably 20 yeah. wins in maybe five years it's pretty dang good i think that's stout can't complain. <laughs> so Russ, I mean, everyone kind of knows like you're a, you're a special character for sure. Like spe- like, and all my buddies Every- back home, all our buddies back <laughs> home in California, like we we a say <laughs> we say certain things about you. Yeah. Some might call you a squirrel, uh, <laughs> but like what what I'm do your squirrel, kayak man. buddies, your kayak competitors, what do they say about you today? They don't, you know, the old me, that's the thing. See, I'm a little more mellow That's now. why I'm curious. I'm <laughs> yeah. No, I'm but still a little they... squirrely, but I, I don't have any nicknames, I don't think. I, I don't know, they probably got some for me in another room, you know, ask them. But, no, but what do they that... say about you, like around the way in? They say, man, that guy's an absolute what, hammer. Wait, what, what did y'all used to say about him? Well, I mean, he was just what? special. He was like an Amart. Like he was just like like he would do similar. off the people, wall. He I've would do off the that. wall. I'm pretty techniques. meticulous. Yeah, that things. that and just like a lot of times you you would use off the wall techniques. Like I remember one time you you pointed something out that I didn't even kind of pick up on was was I would take my my transducer and actually like turn it like if I was fishing like bluff walls and actually yep. take my transducer and turn it and kind of had forward facing sonar in a way. Uh, nobody was really doing that, and you didn't really think anything of it. Yep. So you kind of pointed that out. It's like, <laughs> I, I guess that see was that a kind of innovative. thing. I don't it, know. Is the kayak side uh, cutthroat like like our side? It's getting there. Is it? <laughs> yeah. when, so when you started it, when you started no, it wasn't. It's, it's changing. It's I mean, people are people, you know, and it's um, and the kayak community is really tight knit, close. Like right. everybody's you know really close and friendly, and and I think in the beginning, like everybody was very open with like sharing information and, and some, <laughs> to some extent, yeah, it's still kind of like that, but it's, there's more money gets on the line and, you know, sure. people got to pay the bills and people, you know, it gets, it can get a little cutthroat sometimes just like the bass boat world. And it's, it's pretty similar. It's maybe not quite to that. You guys, yet, okay. Does the kayak wor- world have the guy, like the guy, you know, the guy who I'm talking about, like the guy that shows up with like, you know, the Jersey with a million logos on his, chest and there's not a single wrinkle on the jersey and he's just like hands on the hips and just like but he's like never at the you know he's just kind of oh, yeah. you, ta- you guys me? have those are guys? you talking about it's... me no, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> i could name a few i'm gonna throw out names but um but yeah no there's definitely there's there's lots of different ways to you know to go about tournament fishing to make a promote a yourself career, promote yourself and make sure. a career so jerseys are a thing in kayak oh yeah yeah i don't personally have you one. got one under yeah i think i, I saw one i got under a shirt. chevrolet shirt on. <laughs> yeah, nice. so i'm not even sponsored by chevrolet but hey if you guys want to sponsor do you have me, a jersey i don't I'm know if, do you have a jersey i don't i wear my sponsor that's what hats i thought and yeah shirts good and, and stuff like that that's and what like, i thought and uh you know i have i've keep it real about six or seven sponsors and i do what i can to promote i'm not a huge social media guy i'll do my post and i said try to do my part but i really just like focusing on the fishing and putting my attention towards that and uh, trying to, you know, just do the, be the best angler that I can be. And I think sometimes all that distraction could definitely, t- I mean, it's, it's inevitable. It's going to take, take no some doubt. of that away from no it. No doubt. Is, but, is kayak fishing a place you think in today's world where you can make a living and not do anything else? Christine Fisher's killing it. Right. <laughs> yeah. So, right. yeah. So I mean, are you. Yeah, and you then, are too. I, I'm, no doubt. Yeah. I mean, I'm getting, the she's, yeah, she's getting both money from tournament winnings and right. from all her sponsors and stuff like that. And I'm getting some money from sponsors, which I'm super grateful for the companies I work with. But uh, you know, most of mine comes. The money's from, there. I mean, the money. I mean, fifteen thousand yeah. dollar kayaks plus all these 
you know, we had the COVID years of everyone wanting to step outside. We and, got lucky in the coat, and yeah, and we had it a little easier than you guys because the way the kayak tournaments work is we don't all have to gather in one place and launch out of one right, place. Right, you know, they pretty it's pretty much a free for all as long as it's uh, on the lake, you know, on the lake and it's in bounds and it's a public access. You yep. can launch from wherever you want, so it's not like everybody goes out of like one launch ramp you know you just have to find a public access area uh so they and it's everything's done on your phone too so you know you measure the fish oh that's right yeah you measure your fish they give you an identifier code um you know in the morning so they know that you caught it that day and there's a gps tag on your phone so when you take a picture they know you caught it within that's tournament awesome. boundaries yeah. and then you let the fish go is right it an there. app on your phone just or is it their yeah, phone they have yeah. tourney x so it's like and bass fishing track. chaos okay yeah. cool so you just take a picture of the fish you let it go and even for the check-ins we just you know just say hey, we're off the water uh we didn't even have to have a check-in they just you know they do, a lot of it was just done through like facebook live so is is there a lot of cheating in kayak fishing because I, that that's kind of sketchy to me yeah you know there's air just like with bass boat you know yeah. there, there's walleye little things. tournaments bass tournaments yeah yeah but for there's never been a case that stood out to me i think when people cheat in tournaments a lot of times it becomes pretty obvious yeah you know and i i know the people that are win. all i can say is i know the people that have done well and the people that are winning yeah. and i know personally how good of anglers that they are and i know that they're not cheating not to say right little rules aren't broken like you got it it's almost like an honor system as with far that, as that uh board and stuff taking photos and stuff it's been like, cases of like the old boards used to bend so there's a whole thing about one of the somebody was you know pushing down on a board and you get an extra half a quarter inch out of it because it's quarter <laughs> inch increments so there's been you know little so things like that catch there's, the fish catch a big one put it on the board you put your hand on the you put fish your hand on the and fish. take a and take a picture yeah, yeah. So the, the, the scandal I heard about, I always hear the, the cheating scandals. Somehow yeah. I hear about them. I don't know how. But the guy caught the fish, put it on the board. He put his hand over the fish. Oh, that one. Yeah. With the tail? Yeah. Oh, I heard God, like he ridiculous. literally cut the tail <laughs> off the fish and then like moved it over under his hand and covered yeah, so it with his see. hand. And you look at these so fish. So he gained that I didn't much. have like super long tails. <laughs> yeah. And the tail was a small. But that was like, a real thing? It was all crispy at the end. <laughs> <laughs> That was a real thing. Yeah, that was a real oh, thing. Oh, dude. But that's not, like the people that have, you know, in the cases like that, like they usually end up getting, where they're supposed getting, to be. Where, caught, where those walleye yeah. guys it all are comes somewhere down there. Yeah. Hope yeah. so, man. Hope. Yeah. yeah. By the way, Russ Snyders, uh, how, <laughs> how many of your <laughs> colleagues uh, know your real name? I know the guys who write your checks know your real name i say a lot of my clothes you're friends. danish aren't you i'm dutch dutch oh, so dutch yeah, yeah. I'm dutch. You, you, this guy is really a unique individual because if you look at his name it's russ r-u-s not r-u-s-s -S. it's actually a suffix it's a suffix that's right yeah. his real well, your dad's and grandfather you're the third, the third. I'm yeah. The third, yeah what's your real name uh, my real name's patris leonardus snyders the third and it's not Snyder's with a Y. y it's actually it's, with an I. It's so in the Dutch alphabet. They don't have the letter Y. So yeah. they use the letter I, J. It's like uh, Snidgers. Snidgers. That's, that's what it amazing. looks like. And that's what people say sometimes. That's amazing. So that's my, so unique. It is unique. Yeah. When I was a little kid, I hated it, man. Oh, I bet you did. Get called out at class. We would have like a substitute teacher. They come in and read down the list. Like, <laughs> pe 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 Petrus? Petrus Snidgers? And I'm like, oh, man. I hate you, teacher. I'm going fishing. <laughs> that's awesome, but, dude. That and embrace is, it now. Kinda, yeah. Like yeah. It. Very cool. Cool. No, I think that really goes with like your whole style of fishing, your whole approach to doing stuff. Like Russ is one of those guys that like does everything well. Like he does everything good. Ping pong, whatever, a sport, whatever. Like he's one of those guys that's just good at everything. And he's a good tournament partner to have, no. by the way. <laughs> but you're past that now. You're Sometimes. killing it on the kayak side. I mean, that's just awesome. Like, it seems like every time I pull up Instagram, you know, especially through the spring months and the summer months when you guys are hot and heavy on yeah, the kayak yeah. tour, it's like Russ is first again. He's second again. He's third again. And what's really crazy is like, so, you know, my sponsors, Johnson Outdoors or, you know, Minn Kota Humminbird and, and Old Town Canoes, um, like, like they know that like on our, like the, on that high level, the sponsorship level, the, the you know, the, the, all the, the companies that make this, this fishing industry go around, like they're noticing you guys in a huge, huge way, like That's in a big way. You know, and what I said about the, the, the COVID thing, it seems like, you know, all these companies are coming off record years from COVID, you know, you get the, the, you know, the person from, uh, from the Bay area, for example, who's never fished a day in their life. 
uh, you know, they want to get out. They want to do things with the whole the whole COVID scare. And what's the first thing they do? They either fish off the bank or they go Jump and buy a kayak. A kayak. Yeah. And they're not going to buy a giant 20-foot glittery bass boat. That is for sure. No, it's a good introduction to get people in the sport. And um, like I said, it's, it's feasible for, for, for everybody if you want to get fishing. You know, and you don't have to have, like, this big $15,000 kayak to, to win a kayak tournament. I mean, Drew Gregory, he's, he's been using just kind of bare bones, little 10-foot you know, ultralight kayak and just getting up in these little ten creeks. foot, yeah. So but yeah, little one, yeah. He's got a few different ones, but there's lots of people and a lot of kayak tournaments that I've won. You know, just been a basic kayak like paddling. Sometimes you're on these big grass flats and stuff like that, and you know, having some big heavy kayak with a pedal drive or a motor like isn't isn't the the solution. You know, you just you want to be able to paddle over the grass flats and be nice and stealthy and what stuff do, like that. Uh, so. What do these kayak tournaments pay? Like if you win a KBF or okay. a Hobie, it's typical like five to ten on a regular like tour level event, and the championships are you know closer to forty fifty thousand dollars. So what's your entry fee in it? Like a normal, uh, like two to five hundred bucks. Very affordable. Yeah. Do most of y'all like split Airbnbs or you're yeah. all campers or? Yeah. Well, if one of our sponsors for you know we'll we'll take care of our Airbnbs and. Uh, we'll have a, a house with anywhere from, you know, five to 10 people. Oh, wow. <laughs> it gets crowded yeah. sometimes. Okay. So, uh, so it's very it's feasible. Fine. Yeah. We'll have somebody to cook, you know, one person each night. I'll cook a big dinner for everybody. And it's like a fan, you know, it's like traveling around with your family kind of. So it's, I enjoy it. Yeah. So you take the top 10 in the angler of the year of the Bassmaster Elite Series last year, top 10 in the Hobie kayak angler of the year series, those 10 and these 10. You take them out of the kayaks, put them in bass boats. Take these guys out of the bass boats, put them in kayaks. Mm. They fish the same water in their new vessels. Who wins? Ooh. Uh, maybe still the elite. I mean, those those guys, the, the people at the top level, the tournaments that you're doing are, are overall. But do they know how to paddle and, mm. and position the kayak yeah, like they need to? But do the kayak people know how to get in the bass boat that's and run a trolling thing. motor? And stuff I think you too. might be the only guy that's got that bass boat in There's experience. a few. I mean, there's a handful of people that are, you know, that yeah. were in bass boats that transitioned yeah. to the kayaks. More than, I mean, quite a few. I got, I got but it. they're hammers. They're absolute hammers. Your, your top one. 10 are hammers. Oh, yeah. 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 There might be, like in the bass boat world, you might like, 60 you know 60 percent of the field might be yeah especially at i've your seen level. some of the footage oh, of like these really guys good Yo, where yeah. ours, there's like maybe it's only 20 25 percent where there's but they're you know, good, good por- yeah, yeah there's 25 yeah. percent are solid fishermen where maybe the rest aren't as high of a level you could tell with their mechanics so some of those videos yeah yeah, yeah. I, got, I got a question yeah. you could answer this because you're a boater you had a boat and you do the kayak thing uh-huh. so me and johnny we we kind of have this theory, so you're the one person who could tell me if I'm if we're wrong. Do fish are they? Uh, do they bite better if you're fishing out of a kayak versus a boat? Like, are they more acclimated to hearing water splash and fi- on fiberglass? Yeah, I, I definitely say so. Okay. I've had times where there's a lot of bass boats and you could fish behind them just because they're making so much noise, and that's. A big part of my my game plan is just just to be quiet. really quiet, really stealthy. I'll right. Turn off my electronics, and especially when you're fishing around grass, it's just so hard for a bass boat to like move in and out of it's grass impossible. flat. Yeah, it's without that troll motor, just just even when you have a push pull, like when you're push pulling around, yeah. even then it's, everything's clunky. It's yeah. loud. You're dragging something. Yeah. Yeah, if you're fishing open water, you know, there's different certain cases where it doesn't make a difference. But I'd say definitely around grass, or definitely going back up into like smaller creeks and stuff like that. Right. Yeah, like John Cox style and all yeah. that. Yeah, that's uh, John Cox would be pretty good at it. I was gonna say he's kayak, one of the I'd top say. ten that would go on a kayak and yeah, probably just tear, he'd tear it up. up he tear it up. Can you go sure. like so in these tournaments or just kayak fishing? I dude, I got kayaks sitting like literally ten feet from this this door, and I haven't been in it yet. I'm sorry, old town I, in old I, town yeah. if you're watching it's him it's not me it's <laughs> him he's the reason why we're gonna get you in one what they're sick so, dude they're like really they they're built well, right i mean they got i, like I mean kayaks. yeah they're, they're built well. they i mean they got the remote i mean it's just bluetooth controlled trolling motor all that stuff yeah um but are you allowed to like during tournament competition let's say let's say i want to get a a higher vantage point right uh-huh. sight fishing I mean, uh, is everyone seat. welcome to? There, there, you could stand. You could stand in a kayak. Oh yeah, yeah. no, there's no problem. Stable. No, no problem. problem. No problem. I stand up and sit down. Can you nothing. beach the kayak then then stand on top of it, or do you always have to be? Yeah, floating? as long as you don't get out of your kayak. Yeah, as long as you don't get out of it. Yeah, 
guess we could st- you could beach it and stand on <laughs> That's top. That's question. Why would, for you the wanna, why would you want to beach it? And uh, just stand to get up a little bit, a little bit taller. I guess where we're always you, we're always pushing that line. Where man. are you trying to? What are you trying to see? Look, when just you're get on a little, dude. I'm only five seven. You're five <laughs> six. Dude. Like, I am five eight. You're trying right, to, yeah. <laughs> He's not five seven. He says that all the time. He's not five seven. <laughs> Uh no, when you're sight fishing, you're you're looking for as much you know. Much yeah, it's a little it's possible. a little harder. You're not standing as it's tall harder. as you are. Yeah, and a lot of times I'm when I first transitioned to a kayak, I was like standing like if I was flipping, like I I could not do it sitting down. I had to stand up. Uh, but the longer I've been in a kayak now, I'm I'm completely comfortable flipping sitting down. Um, where yeah, where before it was it was a little more challenging. That was one of the things. I, and the other thing that's kind of hard transition is just getting good hook sets. Like yeah. you really got to be in position, the right position to get a solid hook set. In a bass boat, you can be a little out of position. You just like walk, like run back, and you, you set know, the and hook. You, you, yeah, you the rod will load up. Yeah. you set the hook, and it's up here. You just keep walking back, and eventually you're gonna catch up on them. Or in a kayak, and you don't, you're, done. you're out of position, you're done. Yeah, you're having to reel a lot more. I mean, yeah, you're gonna that's the only thing you can do is reel. Yeah. Um, do uh, do boats give you respect on the water when you're in your kayak? I'd say most times. If they don't, you know, I'm gonna. I'm gonna let them know. <laughs> I, a little sure, birdie, a little birdie told me that uh, someone that some might say is like at the top of our sport right now in boats. Was a little uh, rude to you on the water one time. You fall or something like that? It was at Lake Fork. Yeah, it didn't. Lake Fork. Didn't intimidate me, and I, I knew who he was. Old J- what happened? Old JW? <laughs> what happened? Um, Old Ding Boy? I haven't you know, you, heard we this. We talked, we talked, and he, we, you know, it's everything's good, but I was fishing. You talked to Ding Boy? Yeah, he called me up, and he was very, very professional and very, um, you know, he apologized, and it was all, it was all good. But oh, yeah, good I was fishing, I was fishing in a cove, and next to the cove was a canal. And I was working my way out of the cove and he came flying in and he stopped like on the point in between the cove and the canal. And if he would have just gone into the canal, it'd have been like, all right, it's yours. But instead he started fishing down the bank towards me. Like he came down into the cove all the way to where I was literally cast on the same tree I was casting and then turned around and tried to come into the, into the canal. Oh, he had so, to get a little before he got in. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I, was yeah. A, I was So <laughs> then I, I went around kind of all stealthy and as he was trying to get back into the canal, there was a big, <laughs> uh, sandbar there. So, <laughs> so I, I went around the back side of him. By the time he saw me, I was already kind of around the edge. He's like, what the heck? And he tries using the trolling motor and he gets, he beaches himself on the sandbar. To block you? <laughs> to try to get in front of me. Yeah, oh, but he had a man. sandbar. He got stuck on it. I went into the canal and then I didn't even look back, but he posted a video, you know. Um, what? But the, he didn't He didn't show the part where he was coming. Of you know? course not. Yeah. yeah, and he wasn't the one doing the video editing. Somebody else was. Oh, and it sure. Was, it was part oh, of the sure. story. Know, so part... you were fishing a tournament? You're he too was nice. fishing a tournament. We were both fishing a tournament. Yeah. And it was on the tournament. Dra- I mean, that's kind of crap right, situation always, yeah. in general. You know, we're both competing against, you know, the, yeah. that tournament yeah. obviously has more significance maybe than ours. These guys are making a living, but Depends we're trying to compete you too, you know. And uh, so I guess he got stuck on the sandbar. He had to get out in the mud for like 15 minutes. And try to... <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> That's awesome. So, so I went in there and when I came back out, uh, you know, we, we didn't really make eye contact. <laughs> of course not. Kinda... And the next thing I know, I'm on, you know, my buddy calls me like, oh, you're on this video that he put up on YouTube. And, oh, man. Um, and then immediately. Um, Was he trash talking you? Like no, no, he didn't. And, oh, he's just upset. He's like, "What the heck?" Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and uh, but yeah, he gave me a call. We talked about it. He's like, "Honestly, he's like, yeah, I, I know what I did probably wasn't right. I didn't when I came on the point. You know, I started fishing. I didn't really see you until you know it was too late, and I saw a fish bedding, you know, on a tree right there, and I, I took a cast on it. I, I probably know I shouldn't have. Do you all, know I'm why sorry. he called you? He called you because someone told him who you were. I don't know who. Is Russ Snyder. Right? Someone told. Well, someone told him it was so, Russ Snyder. Well, Jacob so, Wheeler. Man. I mean, what does that matter? <laughs> oh, is that who you're talking about? I didn't know that. <laughs> so here's what I know about Russ. You are the most positive person ever when it comes to other people. Like someone could be peeing on your foot. <laughs> and you would not have a bad thing to say I about them. I would have something. No, I, if people cut well, me off or do something like well, that. So I I, rem- I think you reached out to me because, I mean, it's not a secret, you know, who I can't stand in this industry. And I, and I remember thinking, oh, my gosh, Russ has an issue with someone. <laughs> and it was funny who it was. So 
I love that. But I, I knew like you are not the person to start drama. You're not the person to make something up about I don't a like situation. Drama, but at the same time, I'm going to stay on my ground. If yeah. somebody does something or cuts me off or does something that's not right, usually I'll go up and talk to them. Or it's, it's just, I expect, you know, I, would, I expect people to treat me the way I treat them. If I go into an area right. and I want to fish it, I know it can be some, you know, I can maybe be getting somebody's way. I'm going to go up to them first and like talk to them, say, hey, do you mind? I'm, this is what I plan on fishing. Right. I don't know where you're fishing. I'm just going to try to have a conversation. So about does them. that happen a lot with basketball? boats and kayakers do you do you all feel like and i think it's about the same maybe there might be cases i've heard other cases it hasn't except for that one case like it hasn't happened to, to me uh, uh maybe you know one other time i'd say at percy priest i had to get you know and it didn't even cut off me it cut off my buddy who was fishing near me and i had to call him out but right. uh, you know otherwise it you know they uh, i've heard other stories of people bass boats that haven't treated kayakers you oh know, it they happens look, look down on them oh yeah right. these guys are like literally too i mean because like literally <laughs> I so, like yeah. i mean yeah, yeah yeah i mean one guy's in a full-on boat and kayak i mean like you're not seeing eye to eye like and the other thing too is like you guys get after it like at the break of dawn i mean yeah, and yeah. you guys have to run running lights just like we <laughs> do <laughs> and you know and and luckily and thank god it hasn't happened yet but any of these you know collisions we hear about on the bass boat side i mean yeah i mean yeah. i mean you guys take it like safety obviously i mean you guys that's like your first concern of yeah, course but of course, i mean yeah. you guys are always running Dude. safety lights and and mm -hmm. flags i and, remember yeah. when you flipped your kayak uh toho yeah southern end of toho or something around there uh, right? it wasn't it was on or was cypress it? lake oh but yeah but in toho yeah. chain yeah yeah i remember yeah. it was bad I, I remember oh man i don't remember it if was, i it was a few years ago yeah i was out there and um uh, yeah, I was just out in the middle of the lake, kind of paddling across. I think my water bottle, something fell out of my kayak. And you know, say so usually they're really steady. You could stand up and you could lean over. You know, I feel really s secure in it, but it just goes to show at any point, like you never know, like what can happen. You know, it was a wind, maybe a 15 mile an hour wind, like two mm -hmm. foot wind waves, which isn't isn't too much. I've been out in three, four footers, you know. But um, yeah, it was just I had water bottles going down. I just tried to reach out, uh, reach out to the side, try to get it just as a wave hit me on the side and just over, <sighs> I, over I went. And it was cold and there was nobody around. I was out in the middle of the lake wow. and I, I basically just sitting on top of my kayak. I had my phone on me, which was still good. So I called my friends and stuff. Uh, but after 45 minutes of, of sitting on top of that kayak, I finally waved a, down a bass boater, and uh, he wouldn't help me out. And the kayak's overturned, so you're upside down. I'm sitting on top of my kayak. like it's an iceberg, and you're like a little baby yeah. seal with no <laughs> whales. Like seriously, that's yeah, it. that's and pretty much you it. can't do anything about and two it. Two footers no. in wind. Yeah, wow, it wasn't gnarly wind, but you know, cold. It, yeah, it was, oh. it was cold. It was like 50 degrees. The water was probably 60. Inflatable PFD or, or no, regular? No, I had a regular yeah. I always wear yep. a regular good. one. Good, you know, it's probably good. good. I've heard cases yep. of people yep. getting those. And, yeah, they're not deploying and all that. So, so 30 minutes goes by, an hour goes like by. 40, 40 minutes, and I finally waved out. I get my paddle and just waving it in the air. And this bass boat, pretty far in the distance, oh, luckily man. saw me. He came over. Uh, helped me fish out a couple of my rods. I lost a lot. All oh, my hand tied swim. That was the thing. That's the second. I flipped over twice, and both times I just so happened to have like all like 300 of my hand tied swim jigs. Oh, why, why why do you carry 300? I usually don't. That's, That's the thing. I just I didn't have room in my my black pack so I have a little cooler that'll just keep some little things in and stuff and I just brought my whole binder both times. Both times. I, I, the other time I flipped over was on the uh, Flint River and that was going down like a big like five foot <laughs> something I shouldn't be going. Oh. I went down at once and I made it. So I'm like, hey, I got this. And, uh, yeah, and I flipped over that time and lost a bunch of stuff. Oh, my gosh, dude. That's just part of it. Oh, but you don't dude. think you'd flip over on a lake. You know, I've never had another close call on a lake, but it just goes to show, like, since then, I, I've been good about having, especially it's cold. It's cold weather. I have a little dry bag with some clothes because, you know, that happens at the wrong time, and that, that can be, you know, you put your life in danger. Oh, yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, it's kind of scary. It is, yeah, yeah. But, well, Do you... I, do you think, um, like, kayak fishing, because it seems like more and more money is getting put into y'all's side of the sport. You yeah, see more, more sponsors more, are, are getting More interested. companies, definitely. Definitely, yeah. Do you think it's going to get to a point where you guys have a qualify-only tour, like, uh, like the elite? They talk about that. I sure hope that it happens one of these days. Uh, just make it that much, you know, easier for, for the diehard 
kayak anglers to try to make a living at it, you know, yeah, to fo- it for everyone time. to follow and understand yeah. what's what's really going on and yeah. who's who. And I are, sure are, hope so. Get, are you seeing any uh, non endemic or outside the industry sponsors uh, sponsoring there any are. of the events? Yeah, yeah. Uh, like, <laughs> hard to think of ones uh, yeah. off the top of my head, but they're definitely all, all the Hobie. But as far as like chain of yeah. Chain of command goes as far as, uh, you know, who's putting up money to keep this thing going. It's the kayak manufacturers, would you say, are first, and they're putting the most money into it? Yeah, you know, the battery, or is it typical? battery okay, companies, battery companies are, are a big one for and sure. That's, you know, all different types of battery Rod companies. Rod and reel companies. Rod and reels, and then um, lure companies, just like us, just like just, our side. It's about the same. Yeah, about yeah. the same. Yeah. The battery, co- battery companies, that makes sense, because yeah, if you think about it, it's you know. so much reliant on the yeah. Yeah. That technology and having that lithium technology to, to yeah. right. it's a big part of our sport for sure say with the bass boats too but maybe even more so with the with the kayaks i'd say i, I would know. say yeah, i would definitely. say definitely yeah. that's huge because the bass boats you can have i mean it's definitely a huge advantage we to got have 60 that gallons weight, of fuel but you though. could still yeah but you could still do it with lead acid batteries technically with oh, the yeah. kayaks like you that couldn't ain't have yeah you couldn't have happening. the capacity with the lead acid you guys batteries. are way more weight sensitive than yes us. yes so it's huge for the kayak thing yeah interesting yeah so uh just last month uh I'm kind of winding down here. Just last month, uh, I saw you wrapped up. Was it AOI or was it the tournament you won it was a month a, ago? No, it was the uh, national, the KBF national championship. KBF net. Mm-hmm. So you won the championship. I did, yeah. And how much did that one pay? Fifty-five grand. That is insane for kayak fishing, dude, and well right. deserved. Thanks. But I read your, uh, I read kind of your report on there, and. And that goes back to your guiding days out in California. Like, you always like to give a detailed report. And honestly, like, that's what I try to do when I'm, you know, when I'm fishing on Bass Live. You try to be as totally. informative as possible because you just you want well, to teach. It's about teaching it people is, and right? growing the sport. And right. Whether like you're guiding learning, or totally. people are watching you, like, mm-hmm. you're setting an example and you want you want the sport to grow. And just saying those little things. But as I was reading your report after you won 55K, you were talking about how you're taking your 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 kayak and you know you were going up current and you were casting your swim bait up current yep, and yep. swimming it you know with so the current yeah. just like you are trout fishing and I'll guarantee you more than 90% of your competitors didn't even think about that yeah. and that's yeah. how you win yeah a lot of people do in float you know a lot of times in these kayak tournaments different rivers and stuff uh, tributaries that enter into the lakes are in, in bounds to the tournaments where, where you know these are areas where bass boats can't get to and it's a big part of the the game with kayak fishing is finding these rivers finding these tributaries uh, and a lot of people will do will do floats you know where they'll put in at one point and take out you know five six seven eight nine ten miles down river uh but the thing is even even with the motor a lot of times it's, it's hard to fish down river if you're trying to flip or yep. trying to do certain techniques or you know you end up casting behind you a lot and uh, it all depends on the river, but uh, in this, you know, in this case, what I did was I I motored down about five miles, and I just used that motor to to work my way up. And you know, when I got to a laydown or a log, I can, you know, you have a little throttle on your hips, so you can just. Yep. Uh, adjust that throttle i'll just use my elbow actually nice. to kind of adjust that throttle i yeah. never never have to take my hands off of the the rod and reel it's always right there i can just set it just enough so i'm literally just staying perfectly still that it's current will be running like it's equivalent miles an of hour. spot lock. it's equivalent of spot lock yeah for and they us. do have spot lock on trolling motors too but i think in in this case it's even you know having the bit it's all foot steering too yeah. so i'm steering with my feet i got the throttle at my hip using the elbow to control my throttle and I'll put that kayak right there in one place and I'll just pitch those laydowns and just, you know, I can just pick them apart where if you're floating down river, you're going to get like one or two casts and you're going to, and that right fish knows that fish knows hey yeah. why is that swim bait swimming you know Wrong against way. the current like mm-hmm. that that's i'm not going to bite that thing yeah. when yeah. you're catching six pound largemouth and five pound small is that what they were five pound small mouth I caught one i caught one that was like a surprise it's a little over seven pound largemouth on a big swim see bait. that's ridiculous and dude i caught a couple five in, pound small mouth. in skinny water yeah. and that's yeah. and that's how you make fifty five thousand dollars by doing that, like things like that and decisions like that and techniques and and presentations like that yeah. Yeah, like that thinking can be everything huge. Man. It is. oh it's huge boat boat yeah. position is everything yeah. yeah i mean it's absolutely whether you're in a, ki- a 12 foot kayak or 20 foot bass boat it's yeah. everything yeah you have to convince those fish those seven pound largemouth that have been in that river system for 12 15 years however long yeah. you got to convince them that hey this big thing is real and yeah. it's got to look real and that and whether you get that fish to bite or not 
that is, you know, whether I win the tournament or not. Yeah. And, and yeah. that's, I mean, that's everything right there. And, and again, wh- whether you're on the elite level or KBF, KB, KBF, KF, yeah, Kai national cha- championship level, uh, there's only a very small percentage of guys that think about that. And those well, small, that small details. percentage of yeah. guys are the guys who are going to be in contention at the end i got more on the other side because you know y'all talk above me y'all are <laughs> y'all know too much about fishing <laughs> um though the championship you won 55 grand at how many tournaments did you fish to qualify for that uh probably about seven or eight or so how and the entry fee for those are a couple hundred bucks so 200 bucks 250 yeah. and you fish maybe eight of them yeah. so you're looking at two 2000, grand yeah and you made 55 and the, in the, the entry fee to get into the championship was like 500 so we'll say 2500 total so 2500 entry fees for a chance to win 55 the grand extremely lucrative i mean it's they they pay back well. A lot of these, yeah. And what what do and and so then those those get, eight that you fish those paid five to ten k. I didn't win. That was the only one I won this year. Actually, I won maybe five or six last year. I got a, I think a second. I got a couple. That's you know, amazing. A couple checks this year. Yeah. But that was that was the only one I won this year. It was the right one to win if you're gonna win one though. Right, but but those uh, the eight that you fish though you could win five to ten grand in each of those two, yeah. right? Yep. Yeah. So yeah, so the economics, especially in the world we live in today. For kayak fishing, it, it makes all the sense in the world. Yeah. Like I said, I fished the the BFLs when I first moved out to Nashville. I, I think I got four checks and won a tournament. And if you add up all the expenses with gas, <laughs> lodging, lost with all money. that, I probably lost money. Oh, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Wow. That's amazing. And how many? Uh, how big are the fields in each of these three circuits? Uh, the, the Hobies max out at 200. Wow. I think the national championship for the KBF had like a little over 250. Wow. Um, That's great. But a lot of them, I'd say on average, like 100 to 150. That is, is excellent. You know, yeah, do you good. guys see it growing every year? Or it, it is. Yeah. 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 Every year it's grown. So, yeah, I mean, the, obviously the sport's getting more popular. We're getting more tournaments, too. So oh. sometimes it gets spread. Thin. Overall, there's more competitors, but we're also getting more tournaments. So it's I think 10 years spread. ago, like, you did not, you saw, like, a kayak, and it yeah. definitely wasn't the ones that these old towns look like or your, you know, yeah. torpedoes and things on yeah. them. Like that, I mean, that's just it's five years ago. I just wonder what it's going to be like in another five years, you know? <laughs> what, Are you still going to be in the game? Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. huh? Yeah. People ask me if I'm going to go back to the bass boat. I did, did eventually sell my bass boat a couple years after getting the kayak yeah. fish, and I ended yeah. up selling, Good. selling my boat. Good. But. What's, uh, like, when it comes to rigging a kayak, how many, what's normal, like a tournament person, how many, like, graphs do you have on it? Do you do the 360 thing? Some people do the 360. The live scope, I think, is a little more popular. The 360, some people do it, but it's just a little, it's a little difficult. It gets in the way a little bit, I think, right. having an... It depends on your setup and the troll motor and the boat you have and stuff like that. But there are guys with 360. There's probably even more with, with live scope, I'd say. Two graphs? Yeah, like I, said, I, have, I have a 10-inch uh, Humbert Helix and a 9-inch and Garmin. Right, side uh, by side? Side by side, yeah. I got a bar that goes goes across the front of it. So it's just they're both right there in front of me. Uh, the live scope I have on a, a little bracket where I can kind of turn the handle and point the direction yeah. that's awesome it's a little more difficult yeah, on the bass boat you can use you know your you, feet you can use your feet so it does make it a little more trickier and your kayaks always kind of move in so you got to kind of always reach down and kind of follow along with it but it's uh yeah it has its time and place i'm definitely not that's you know doing the live scope thing and, and the deep water fishing isn't really you know what my game plan is most times i'm more right. in the creeks and the backwaters uh, fishing around grass, fishing, you know, fishing target more like John Cox type yeah. of style fishing. Yeah. Um, there's many tournaments him. that, huh? Yeah, you've mentioned him like two or three times. You now. really you like a little John man huh? crush on him? Uh, I mean, he's, he's money, dude. He's <laughs> he is, money. Man. He, he is. is money. Yeah, I admire him. I admire yeah. his style of fishing. Yeah. Uh, I like how he, you he's know, simple he gets up and those... effective. Yeah, yeah. He is. So, obviously, in a bass boat, you can take all the tackle in the world. Did you? Did you used to be someone who took a bunch of tackle? Oh, yeah, he'd even tell you. Oh, keep yeah. things pretty simple. Yeah. I remember when oh, we yeah. did our bass boat tournaments oh, back yeah. in the days. Three like, or four you boxes. Just, like, have three four, and you'd yep. see I'd uh-huh. have every, you got everything. everything. Yeah. I'd be packed full. So yeah. has it helped you going to a kayak and, and not being able to take <sighs> no, as much? I'm still the same way. So it gets really like every – there's times where during the tournament um, each day after practice, you know, after each day – after each practice day, I get back and I'll have a whole truck just full, you know, full of all right. of my tackle. And I have basically one box that I can bring on the kayak. 
So as I'm going out each day, there would be things I take out and things I put back in. And being I'm meticulously organized with all, all right. my stuff, I think that's a big part of, of you know why I do well and uh, just kind of my strategy how many how I operate. How but many rigged rods can you take on your kayak with you? I take about eight's the most I take. So it's a good amount. It's yeah, enough, that's decent. sufficient enough to, yeah. to cover most applications, sure. I'd say. Um, but a lot of that, you know, just... Yeah, just carrying enough that just the terminal tackle and the soft plat, just all the stuff. You know, I got one uh, waterproof box. I'll I'll put like crank baits in. I'll have one waterproof box. I'll put like top water and jerk baits in, and maybe one box with uh, with spinner baits and, and jigs Dude, and stuff I like that. And all my bags, Ziploc bags, of soft plastics, and I'll have to go into. I said take out things, put them back in each day, and it, it takes some time to do all that, but it's part of it. I um. We were in Port Aransas, and I splurged on, a, I think it's called Yak Pack or something. It's I got some little fancy box for the back. It's the fanciest, like, tackle. Oh, the organ. Black Pack. Yak Attack Black Pack. Is that what that is? That the box? Is. Yeah, they have a it's new one. so awesome. It is. Those things are legit. Yeah. yeah. They just came out with a new one. It's redesigned. And the old old one was great. I've used it for years, but they, they really put a lot of thought into the new one. I think I might have the new one because I was blown away at yeah, just the little details that good. they thought about. Yeah. You know? Yeah. No, they spent a lot of time on that. I've been really happy with mine. I got a few of them. Uh, you can mount the rod holders to it and all You're that right. stuff. Yeah. You can mount camera mounts and, mm -hmm. you know, your little flagpole and, and all that. So they, they really Sick. thought of everything. Yeah, yeah, I don't have a clue who they are, but they were uh, – I had to get a – I was missing a prop for one of my old towns. Uh -huh. And the uh, only old town dealers, like in Corpus Christi or something, I went. And while they were digging around in the closet trying to find what I need – I, I walked up and saw it and I was like, oh my gosh, I got to have one of those. Yeah, no, they're great. I've been loving that. And a lot of their accessories, they've really put a lot of thought into uh, just doing things for like paddle holders, like I said, camera mounts. Yeah, you'll have so different. little space and how yeah. you have to operate and move. Yeah, yeah. Like you That's have, a big part like, of it, just with your style of fishing too. Right. Like, especially when I'm in my, my smaller boat, uh, which I use for the, the backwater stuff, I like having it very open around me. So when I'm flipping or pitching or, you know, um, I just like having... Other, you know, other people will have their graphs like mounted on the sides and stuff like that, and they're doing you know more overhand casting and right. stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, and, that's tough uh, to do the way you fish. Big part, yeah. What I do is just lots of different different angles on my casting, you know, on different right. types of casts depending on how I'm setting up on different structure and stuff. So, so uh, when's the last time you went out west? Uh, I mean, I visited family a little. Earlier this year, I guess. Last time I went fishing, I did a couple of tournaments out at Clear Lake. Uh, the Bassmaster Kayak Series was out there. I think that was 2020, uh, towards it's like midsummer, July, August. Was there a decent turnout for that? Yeah, not bad. I think they had about 100 people in each, each That's tournament. There was a KBF. Stout for California, period. Uh, yeah, that was good. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, I mean, California they're... is like its own little world when it comes to, to bass fishing. And the it's kayak just... thing, too. It's just like the bass boat yeah. world, where yeah. like California is like its own little community, its own little world. I just uh, I was just there for the one bass U.S. Open. Mm -hmm. I had a was that me fifth, again? Yeah, uh, or no, Mojave. it was on Mojave. That's right. Yeah, I was catching was it, small, it's too 20, low 20 pound bags. Yes. That makes sense. Yeah, 20 pound bags, a small mouth, and uh, it felt good to be out west again. But it's like just like you said, it's it's they're on they're in their own little bubble out there, and uh, it's it's just a shame. I mean, like you know, when we were fishing as a co angler, fishing the the Bassmaster Opens in the early 2000s. You were fishing as a pro, matter of fact, and and remember all the guys we used to look up to yeah, growing up, and yeah. some of them made guys like Jared Lintner and Ish Monroe and yeah, uh, so Brett Height and those guys. They all they all like, went on. It was like one group, that yeah. older group, and yeah. then it was that next generation. Yeah, you, myself and Mark Lucas, Daniels, yeah, Cody Ma Milton, yeah, or Cody, uh, Meyer. Cody Meyer, and then like and then there then the valve shut off, and like there was no other. Uh, you know, Western anglers that really kind of made it out to the, yeah, the national like one stage. One here, one there, but nobody. And I don't, and I don't know the reason why, because the anglers are hammers out yeah. there. They just getting past that Colorado River border. I mean, get, just getting past Nevada. You know, I mean, it's hard. It's, it's, it's very hard. It's, it's hard. a lot of sacrifice. I mean, just it's tournament hard. fishing in general. Man. You literally it's, it's have a lot to of do... sacrifice, and it's a lot of yeah. Uh, you it's really a lot of work, a lot of money, a lot of sacrifice, a lot of commitment. You really have to, to you know, to tighten up the belt, tighten up the pants, and tuck your shirt and say, "Hey, look, I'm gonna make a huge life change and and get after my passion. I'm gonna move to Fort Worth. I'm gonna move to Nashville, Tennessee, just like some of the guys we grow up. You know, like a Mike Tuck, for example. Yeah. No one really knows who that is. All the guys out west do. 
He's but, getting back into it. Yeah, now, absolutely. You, you know, like I said, good. he made the decision to to move out east and mm-hmm. and chase it. Jason Barofka lives yeah Texas an hour too. from here. You know, yeah. and um, Mark unfortunately Daniels moved out. Yep. Justin Lucas, yep. Alabama, both those guys. Yep, Aaron Martin's all those guys. Unfortunately for a western uh, for a western angler, you are know, there many guys the out shot. out west that are making a full time living? Like maybe like Gary Dobbins Very did tough. back in the day, or you know those some of those other we, guys. We who... were at man. I'm gonna get crucified for this, but we were out at uh, the one bass open, and I actually fished as a co angler. Because you know, I I got a little you know health situation these days. So, but I wanted to fish. Get your fix and get out there and do yeah. some tournament fishing. Yeah. I get so uh, I did the co angler thing, and uh, and it allowed me to just kind of pay attention. I got new draws and stuff, and I will say, I was, my eyes were opened to how bad it is out west for tournament fishermen. Just like just the opportunities and stuff that yeah. that's out there for me. Yeah. yeah, it's just different. It's you sad. know, it's different. Like even looking at some of the guys that I know that they they call their professionals, you know, like their top tier guys that are killing it out there, they're not killing it. Uh, it that it's just the sponsors. They like, are killing not, it. They're killing it in their own bubble, it. like we well, talked no, about. No, 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 not not I don't mean it like that. I mean it like they're not making making enough to make a solid living exactly. and a career out of it. Like exactly. They're crushing. They're awesome anglers. They're they're killing it in the you're, If you're crushing it out here sponsors, in Texas, you're making it. You know. Well, that's what I'm saying. Is if he's crushing it out west, he's crushing in the bubble we're talking about. Yeah, but the bubble's bad. That's the problem. Is the do, opportunities. But just and they do, keep, do they know out west that they do now? Listen to trade. They do they, now. They know out west what. That that there op- that it's not good. Like, they know it. They know I'm it. I'm sure most of them know it. I mean, a lot of people. I have a lot of friends back home. You know that, that aren't aren't anglers. That have a lot of friends that have also moved out here. You know, moved to different parts of the country from California that aren't uh, that aren't anglers. But I have a lot of friends that that would love to. But it's just whether it's family or right. just it costs it is, so much more to do it from the west such a it commitment costs so to, much more to get out there i mean the cost of living's you know it's cheaper insane. once you get out of there but it's just sometimes you have family got to take care of sometimes you're locked right. in this job you're just you're in this situation in. where it's just like you're just trying to get by and pay the damn bills yep. and, and you know do what you can yep and what's crazy is is it's for fishing it's for catching fish and putting them on a scale yeah. and collecting a small check at the end of the day it's like yeah. It's mind boggling, like yeah. the passion that drives like this whole this whole tournament scene, whether it's kayaking or, ba- or or bass boating. It's it really is a trip if you think about it but, to catch fish and get paid I for mean, it. It is. <laughs> I mean, from the west, travel east. It's it's cool that we have that opportunity yep. to do that. It's it's awesome. It's, yep. What are, no other countries like, like that. that. There's no. no other country like that. No. Canada doesn't even have that. No, no. So it's crazy. I'm grateful to be living where we are. Mm-hmm. For sure. But out west, y'all have like primo fishing. That's what blows my mind is yeah. how good the fishing is and the diverse fisheries. Like if we could move that to one of these states that appreciates it, yeah. you know, I know that the would protect too, it. The level of competition there. I'm, yeah, I'm, he'd probably tell you too. Just what, what you, I mean, going from there, it's almost like it. I wouldn't say it got easier, but just going to the opens and stuff like that, it wasn't like as big of a transition that you thought it would be. It, it, I mean, it's almost just as the same level of competition, or if not, maybe a little easier than uh, than what we had to compete against out west, especially back then. I can't speak yeah. for what it's like now. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if it's the same level that it, it was then, but I know back then, man, it was whew, it was just everybody was a stick. Yeah, they are now too. They they yeah. are. It's. And it's just all regional, right? I mean, those guys, there's a couple of kings at the top out there. This Texas region here, you see the same exact names up there. But, you know, what's most impressive to me uh, is when you're able to travel from state to state like like you do, you know, on the kayak side and just and continue to kill it. And that's, I mean, that is absolutely impressive. So, like when Trait says, you know, the opportunities are it's not great, you know, out west, it's it's – yeah. It's more challenging and more, more difficult. Yeah. yeah. Maybe put in more work. They're to, doing to really well. They're happen. doing well in their yeah. bubble, like I yeah. said. But but what's really impressive and what gets all the looks and all the attention of sponsors and media is when you're able to duplicate it up at the Great Lakes, down there in Okeechobee, right. back down to the yeah. California Delta and, and all over. So and that's just where the that's, attention is. Yeah. And, and, I think uh, that's why the West Coast anglers have done so well that do, the ones that do make it out, that try to make a living at it, like yourself. 
uh, it really sets you up for for success. Just having grown up in such a diverse fishery. you're just able to fish freer like you don't like you, you don't feel you out of, have, you don't you don't feel out of your comfort zone no matter where you your, are your tool belt right, there's just you, you loaded the tool belt's got so many different tools that you could use in the shallow water the deep water the yeah. dirty the stay and the clean and uh you know and then the boy from alabama that grew up with a flipping stick in his hand uh or somebody you know, like from florida i look at the guys from florida where they just have grass shallow grass lakes it's yeah like, God, what yeah but then you got john cox and he just takes Whatever are, they, yeah, you learn and he does it everywhere. Learners. One guy, <laughs> there's quick learners, or, he, you know, guys from. He just does it everywhere. He just yeah. does. He's able to take you know those four things he does and yeah. applies the those four things everywhere. It blows my mind. Yeah. So Russ, as we're winding down here, I mean, I, I I know there's a lot of people watching this and and have watched your career, especially myself. But uh, on the kayak side, we love watching you hold up fifty five thousand dollar checks. Um, you know, for any of the younger guys watching that, you know maybe a little intimidated dipping into the pro-am side or the bass boating side and may want to get into the kayak stuff. I mean, where does he start for one? And two, what advice do you have uh, for the viewers and the listeners? Hey, you know, start here. I mean, the, the biggest thing is just that grassroots level is of, of joining a, a local club. There's cat clubs all over the country, and that, that's how I got into it, which was uh, my local club in, in Nashville is uh, KBFTN, Kayak Bass Fishing Tennessee, and uh, there's just a few local lakes that we'd fish, and uh, one, it's just a great place to, to meet anglers, to meet friends, uh, meet you know like-minded people that share your same passion, uh, and then from, from there, it seems like every club, there's a few guys who will travel around to more of the regional tournaments, so it gives you an opportunity to meet some friends and have some you know, travel buddies to, to travel around and, and do some, some bigger tournaments and, um, you know, just kind of let it grow from there, you know. Um, but I, I really do think kayak fishing is just a, a great, especially introduction if somebody's new to sport and uh, if you don't have the finances to buy an $80,000 bass boat, you know. Um, like I said, I have just as much fun competing out of these little plastic boats than I did uh, just as fired up about competition and it's so many things translate over um that it's it's a really good way to get into sport whether uh you're limited on finances or if you're a young angler or anybody just getting into the sport i really i really believe that you think about fishing 24 7 don't you do. how about giving them some advice some life advice let's part let's let's part with the audience with some life advice life advice okay. from russ snyder's <laughs> if you want to you know if you're if you're trying to pursue this uh, full time, or if you're you're young guy and you're looking in the future, saying, "Hey, I want to, I'm going to be a professional bass fisherman or a professional, uh, whatever." Yeah, uh, you know, big, you know, a lot of it is is sacrifice. There's there's going to be things that you're going to have to sacrifice. You're going to have to work hard, and whether that means, you know, I know when I was young, we we <laughs> we both had a good time when we were early twenties. We'd mm -hmm. go out and go out and party or drink or go places, you know, have, have a good time. But we'd cut it off early. We'd cut we it did. off early we to did. go we fish in the next dis day. Yeah, we did most of the times. <laughs> he said yeah. most of the time. Yeah. <laughs> we were pretty disciplined. But you sacrificed but... the party and the girls, the, the yeah, being cool a lot of that's... to chase your passion. You do. And that's why you and ended then, up where you did. And that's and why that's, I did yeah. That's why I did that because you got you to gotta be disciplined about that. And if yeah. you let all that – uh, kind of consume you, you know, it's going to be, that's, there's distractions in life. And if you want to succeed at anything, uh, you just got to be disciplined about keeping, you know, keeping away from those distractions and keeping focus on, on what your goals are. And the more you can really just, just focus on that and pursue your passion, the more success you're going to have at it. There it is. Sacrifice. Yeah. Russ, it was awesome hanging out, man. Too, I hope, man. Uh, yeah, I hope we get it's to do this it. again. And honestly, the next time the three of us get together, we'll hopefully it's on a kayak. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or we could do that switcheroo thing where All you right, hop in my boat, boat you I'll take the kayak. kayak, we'll have a little competition. <laughs> You're going to we'll get in my it. kayak. I'm like, man, I don't want to leave this thing. You're going to see what it's all about, man. Right like on, it. Russ. It was good seeing your brother. <laughs> you too, Appreciate Chris. everything. Right. Bye, Russ. Good times.